You are listening to Family Today with Fumi Johnson. It's another beautiful Friday morning and I want to say welcome to a beautiful day. It's a day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and we are glad. Let somebody just make some noise. Just hola, just shout, breathe, exhale. He said, God is good and his mercies endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord because he is what? He is good. Is there someone out there listening to me who wants to say thank God for the many kindnesses of the Lord? Today I'm going to share with you something that you will love to hear. Now listen, just stay glued to 92.3 Inspiration FM because what I want to say is something you want to hear. Do you know that God wants you to be rich? Yes. God wants you to be rich. God wants you to succeed. So the first thing I'm going to say to you this beautiful Friday morning is, please dream. Dream because it is free. Nobody's going to charge you for dreaming. Also, succeed because society desperately needs it. I need your success just like you need mine. I need your breakthrough just like you need mine. And in doing so, make your own rules. When you dream and you succeed, Make your rules, but make it in a way that the world can see and in a way that unlocks gratitude in the world. That men may see your good work and do what? Glorify your father. That is if God, that is my own God, is your father. So that's what I want us to look at today. God wants you to be be rich. So I want to take you through a journey on how to be rich. Are you ready with me? This is Family Today with Fumi Johnson. If you miss any of my points, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Threads, X, The Fumi Johnson. And then you can catch up. Before we go on, let's read these scriptures. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. It says, The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil to it. The blessings of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil to it. Proverbs 10, 22 in the KJV. The first one I read was NIV. In KJV, it says the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and it added no sorrow to it. So painful toil brings sorrow. That's what it means. And I will read that same scripture in the message translation. See, God's blessing makes life rich. Nothing we can do improve on God. That means God is absolutely committed to you being rich. And I think that's good news because sometimes we have been made to think that being rich is left for some few, but God wants you to succeed and we're going to look around how to make that happen. So God really wants us to be rich, but sitting around waiting for a miraculous deposit is not the way. People are becoming richer every day. I mean, the comedian making you laugh, the people producing ventilators during COVID, they were becoming rich. The investors funding them, they were getting richer. So the common denominator is that they are taking action. They are giving value. They are doing something that people would want to pay for and they are becoming richer. So if you're listening to me, you're a praying man, faith plus action is what really works. So as today, for the next few minutes, I'm going to be teaching faith-based rules to getting rich. You can write that down. Faith-based rules to getting rich. There are four S that I want us to look at. The roadmap to success has four stages. The four stages are struggle, stability, success, and significance. Struggle, stability, success, and significance. And I want to say to you, you just need to mark what stage are you if you're in the struggling stage welcome it's normal it's the beginning it doesn't mean you're going to end there but most people they love the struggling stage they are so upset about it that rather than the upset ginger them to move to the next stage they just stay there hating the people that are moving up the ladder you won't succeed hating the people moving up the ladder you just need to know that that first stage is the struggling stage and you need to know what to do to move on to the next stage and to the next stage until you get to the last stage which is the stage i call the significance so the question you're going to ask me is how do i attain financial stability i know having a lot of money is not always rosy but let's look at what ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 12 says in the message translation it says hard and honest work earns a good night's sleep whether supper is beans or stick, but a rich man's belly gives him insomnia. It means 
even when you're rich sometimes you stay up all night thinking about the next move or how to divest how to move on to the next project how to move on from the new thing you just had overnight or how to conquer the opportunity that has presents itself so how can we become wealthy i want you to follow me closely number one find a model a wealthy mentor a sponsor and a coach i mean your friend can provide you with great support however unless they happen to be wealthy they can't show you the pathway to wealth always have the right answers or attitude they won't have that they can't show you the pathway to wealth they can't have the right answer or attitude this should be someone that you're going to make your mentor should be someone that you respect and you look up to and of course someone you call wealthy so what is the qualification for the person that you would choose as a mentor if you're walking in the path to being wealthy the person must be wealthy you can't say this is my best friend and he is still in the struggling stage he can't show you how to get to the significant stage so you're not going to choose this person by sentiments let me share this with you jeff bezos asks warren buffy these are billionaires why do you tell everyone that cares to know the secret of your wealth and warren buffy answered i tell all the people about my wealth because most people don't want to make money slow slow and steady accumulation of wealth i tell them but they listen they hear but they don't use what i tell them because all they want is get rich quick so my first point is find a model number two learn money learn money what do i mean by learn money you will learn how to read profit and loss statements and other financial forms you will learn the rule of tax how to avoid it not to evade it because if you evade tax the acts of the law will cut you you will learn the difference between assets and liabilities you will learn how to improve your credit you will learn the difference between good debt bad debt and be willing to use other people's money you will learn how to use other people's money so i said number two is learn about money so what are the ways where you can learn what are the opportunities open to you to learn one read books two attend conferences and webinars and seminars and podcasts listen to radio conversations like this where i'm talking about financial freedom there's some books you can i have a book the secret black book of wealth if you want to know more about the book send me a dm i can tell you i can get a copy so number three take charge of your finances how do you do that from top to bottom number one earn more than you spend that looks like a very easy thing i mean i should earn more than i spend can i shock you most people spend more than the end now something happened recently i know a young man who just got a job i wouldn't call it his dream job but it's definitely an above average job in the nigeria of today he's excited about the work and was really going all over the place only for his background check report to come back to the hr guess what happened he had gotten 10,000 naira loan from loan sharks you know those loans that you get and they will tell you you pay back in seven days and you pay maybe 30 percent and i think he did not pay that money you know they get your bvn and your nin you don't know that those are your identities with that when they are doing the background check they find out that the man does not have financial integrity and now if care is not taken he may lose that dream job so don't spend more than you earn if you earn 100,000 don't cut your coat according to your lifestyle cut your coat according to the size of your fabric the fabric is 100,000 so if it is a yard and a quarter and one and a half yards make trousers if it is half a yard make this coat if it is two yards make a jacket you can still eat balanced meal with your 100,000 when these other people are taking um, sausage and bacon, if you eat ogi and akara, you will see fat and oil, carbohydrate and protein. You will have it there. Just slice some cucumbers, some a furry roll that will give you vegetables. And you would not have broken the bank. Now that tomatoes are expensive, you don't have to make stew. Just make any kind of with your ugu, which is plenty now, water leaf, which is plenty now, dry pepper will solve the problem and some dry fish and voila you're fine Ogbono is a good meal when pepper is expensive because at the same time you're having the 
dryness of it and dry pepper. What about okra that is mixed? Yorubas call it ilala sepo. You know, you have to find a way around. What I'm trying to say is stop complaining in your struggling stage. Look for how you can move up to stability. I'm on point number three to take charge of your finances. The first thing is earn more than you spend. I said it may sound obvious, but keeping a close eye on the bottom line is something that many people fail to do. The more profit and cash flow you can create, the easier your millennial vision will be reached. Number two, for expenses to make money, you need to be able to keep the money. And that means controlling your costs. Some of you don't put eyes into those nitty gritty details. What are the things that you use often? Are you running an office? Paper, ink, internet. You may need to shop for these things where you can get some discounts. Paper is expensive in Nigeria now. So instead of just asking the vendor to supply, do you want to go to a vendor in Mushi or wherever they're selling this paper bulk wholesale? Because you use it often. If it's something you use one of, what about tissue paper? How often do you use it? Do you even know how many of it you use? How big is the company? How big is your office? Can you choose some other products instead of the regular ones that you're using? It's important for you to do that. Manage your expenses. Things that are one-off you may not pay detailed attention to it, but things that you use continuously is important for you to know how much they cost and how you can save cost on it. Then you need to keep your credit in check. The wealthier you become, the more you will realize how important your credit score is. We don't do credit score in Nigeria, but that time is coming because right now, they are beginning to give student loans. I think we also do credit score, but maybe not in the way the Western world does it. Because when you're trying to get a loan in the bank, they tell you, give, give them your bank statement for the last six months or one year. They want to track your credit pattern. They want to see your inflow and your outflow. They want to see what consumes your money. Before they start asking you for your collateral, they are first of all reading your financial personality. We all have a financial personality. And the bankers, they know how to do it. The next point is financial planning. There's a good reason why a bank would always ask for financial plans and books before accepting you for a loan. It paints a picture of how clear your vision is and how organized you are with money. Whether you need to borrow money from the bank or not, keeping financial reports is just a good practice. Give yourself a plan with clear objectives and goals and then stick to it. I'll take this one and then we'll go on a short break. Don't show off. Show up. I'll continue that conversation after the short break. Paul says it is better for a single man to marry than to burn. Are you single, married, widowed, separated or divorced? Join me on Family Today. Family Today with Femi Johnson is one program that will bring you in alignment with who you truly are and open your mind to how you rock your significant interpersonal relationships while sidestepping the landmines, culture, religion and society have laid in your path. Family Today with Femi Johnson goes where others are shy to go and shines the light in the dark corners others have forgotten. Tune in at 11.30 a.m. every Friday to listen to Family Today with Fumi Johnson on Inspiration 92.3 FM. We are back. Remember, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, The Fumi Johnson. We are learning about how to become rich because God wants you to be rich. My number four point is don't show off. Show up. What do I mean by that? You can still drive that old car. One more year, maybe two. As long as it's not taking more out of your pocket than it should. Let your gain pay for your luxury. Don't spend your capital. You know, a young man approached me and made some money. Some, maybe like a hundred million. I was like, now, let me go rent a big house. Let me show them. Showed me the picture of the kitchen. The picture of the sitting room and say, what do you think? I asked him how much was the rent. The rent was 8 million para. Then they want to take two years. And that's how we pay in Nigeria. Because agency fee, commission, everything was like 18 million. I said, you just made a profit of 100 million. He said, because when people come, you know, they will see me. And when they see the kind of place I'm living, you know, that would attract more wealth. I said, I'm sorry. I beg to disagree. How many business people come to your house before they give you business? 
I said, maybe when they see the quality of your letter-headed paper and the quality of your proposal and those meetings you want to meet with them, they can meet in hotel lobbies, they can meet in lounges, they can meet in their office, they don't have to come to your house. I said, so I, I, I disagree with you. You don't need that house to get more money. I said, do you need a, a house? I said, sure. Everyone needs a roof over their head. But I don't think you need to spend 18 million out of 100 on renting a house. Because when you rent a house of that size, you also need furniture and accessories that would accompany that status. And that'll probably take you another maybe 12 million to put the right bed. I'm just being conservative. That means you're not taking Italian furniture. It may be some, you know, uh, good brothers from China. Because if you really want to furnish your house, the upscale style, you would need to spend much more than that. I said, no, all those are consumables. I don't think you have attained that height yet. Maybe a good service flat somewhere that is even much smaller would be better for you. Or you can still stay where you're staying and just to shop the way you appear. Maybe some cologne, some nice shirts, and you don't need a lot of it until you get enough money so that your gain will pay for your luxury. So if you're not getting anything in this broadcast this morning, what did I say? Let your pain pay for your luxury. Don't show off. Show up. Let your gain pay for your luxury. Don't have the habit of showing off. Just do what? Show up. I can tell you some more stories. I remember those days, you know, I had to go to London for something and I had to go to central London and it was going to be a big meeting. I didn't have a lot of money and I called a taxi then. That was like a 19 years ago, I remember. I called a taxi, it was going to cost me £120 from where I was. I was in Enfield and I wanted to go to central London. And I said to myself, what's the way around this? Because I didn't want the people to see me anyhow. I needed to be fully dressed. Then I thought to myself, Shh, there's a way out. The meeting is going to be in a hotel. Let me leave so that I will be there like an hour early. I'm sharing with you what I did. I took the bus. The bus took me from where I was to London for £2.79 as against £120. And that was a return. That £120 was one way. In fact, when I'll be coming back, I'll be on traffic. It'll be peak period. So I would have spent £240. So the bus ticket was less than £3. So what I did, I wore my jeans and t-shirt, carried the clothes I'm going to wear for the meeting in my bag, got to the hotel. The concierge just saw that I went to the hotel, disappeared to the toilet changed and I dressed up. They just saw someone went in and another thing came out and I went, stayed at the lobby, waited for the people that were coming for the meeting with me. I held the meeting. It was very good. When I was done, I said bye to them. Went again to the same place where I changed. Changed. Because I needed to dress in a particular attire and it was going to be too much wearing that, you know, hopping on the bus. What I'm trying to say is, don't show off. Show up. I showed up and I got the deal closed. So what did I say? Don't show off. Show up. So now this segment I'm going to share with you how to save intentionally to invest. Most people say to me they're not able to invest because they don't have enough money to invest. I only have 5000 a month. How can I invest 5000 do you know that if you compound 5,000 for a year, it's going to be 60,000? And if you do that for another three years, you're going to have about 180,000 and you can invest. What about to invest in mutual fund that can take your money every month? Maybe in a pension scheme, you're putting 5,000 there every month, 10,000 every month. You don't know. Okay, there's a seven year rule when that money can double. But people don't even start, so they can't make that rule. They can't make it up to that point. So you can do that. So let me talk to you about how to save intentionally to invest. The key is to invest your stored money on something that will earn you more money. So, how do you plan for that? First thing to do is invest in yourself. How do you invest in yourself? Courses are a way to improve your abilities and skill and can help you to increase your income. For instance, you have a school start, go for a higher degree, add a skill, learn all these new tools that people are using to upgrade themselves. Also, apart from adding a skill to what you have, investing in your health can also make you more productive, which can help you increase your profitability. Then invest in your business, buying more stocks, hiring employees, 
invest in marketing and stuff like that if you're the only one working find out that what you're doing you can get someone else to do it so that you can think better that's investing into your business i can iron but i wouldn't iron because this time i'm going to spend ironing i will spend that same time doing more quality things except of course some people use ironing for their mental health they use it to unwind so that means you're not just ironing because you want to save costs of ironing but you're using it to help yourself become more productive invest in assets and i'll say this repeatedly you have to understand the difference between assets and liability some liabilities are inevitable a roof over your head mobility to move from one point to another they are things you have to do but when you are investing deliberately invest in assets real estate is a popular investment that wealthy millionaires make to improve their cash flow what are the other um, assets that you can invest in the rule of thumb is this whatever it is that is taking money out of you is a liability whatever it's bringing money in is an asset are you a school teacher do you do extra lesson the extra lesson that you do is bringing you money has become an asset but there are four classes of assets the asset i'm looking out for you is what i call the passive income that can make you sit down and your money is working for you right now in nigeria treasury bill interest rate is high bonds are high you can have from 16.8 percent up to 23 percent find out about how you can get that you can talk to your bankers because the interest rate is high the federal government bond take in as little as five thousand naira. so what about doing that what about investing some money in the name of your children and keeping it the bonds are for two three years so when you put that money in you're not able to get it immediately which is good for you ecclesiastes chapter 11 says ship your grain across the sea after many days you may receive a return verse 2 says invest in seven ventures yes in eight you do not know what disaster may come upon the land what he's saying is diversify your income push your money into several things earn something from it but do that intentionally and deliberately so i'm going to share with you a few incomes that you can have rental income that's from real estate some of you are living in a place and you can't afford to buy land there but you can afford to buy land in another place that is not as upscale build a property there even if it's a bungalow and rent it out when you're building in that kind of area it's better for you to build room self-contained you know apartment because a lot of people come into that area they're usually small families that cannot afford big facilities you go and build a six bedroom house eight bedroom house all rooms and suite in an area that is low income you're not going to attract any good rent but if you build a room self-contained that is with a living room room kitchen toilet you will get more people to rent it so rental income from real estate dividends from stocks shares investment businesses that are managed by someone else do you want to give your pos business to someone else to manage some people are doing this business where they help you to buy your electricity tariffs and they make some commission on it you can do that what about affiliate marketing apart from your earned income your earned income usually is your nine to five job that you have to be there there's also the profit income can you buy something and sell to someone and make a profit on it and then interest income you have interests in something well i've told about dividend income rental income capital gain if you buy property after a few years the property appreciates and then royalty income are you a good writer maybe you want to write some books and then you start getting reality the next thing is make sure all year round be a student of wealth you cannot attract what you do not respect you have to respect being rich you have to respect the wealthy and then learn how to become students so how can you be a student of wealth here is how to learn fast number one stop procrastinating one of the biggest mistakes people make is not taking action if you want to become wealthy in five years stop procrastinating and start putting these tactics into practice right now i told you about stocks about bonds about treasury bill right now as you're going off after my show right away talk to a financial investor go to your bank Say you heard on the radio family today with Fumi Johnson how you can buy treasury bill. I don't want to sell any 
financial company. They didn't give me any rights to sell them and they haven't paid me. So I won't mention any name. But talk to your banker or someone that can help you. Number two, how to be a student of wealth. Learn from your mistakes. I don't know anyone who is an investor who hasn't made a mistake. I'm an investor. I've made a few mistakes. I've made some wrong judgments. So it's, 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 it's not the end of the world to do that. But learn from your mistake. In your attempt at becoming wealthy, you will make mistakes. How quickly can you identify and learn from these mistakes? We determine how quickly you'll be able to find success. Then learn from other people's mistakes. Use your mentors, wealthy friends, autobiography books as case studies. Learning from the mistakes of wealthy people can dramatically speed up your wealth. There are some books, some old books, The Richest Man in Babylon, Think and Grow Rich. These are great books that have been useful and that you can read and read again. Be consumed with giving. Sow the good seed bountifully. Be consumed with giving. It's important for you to give even as you are progressing, even in your struggle stage. Because if you do not form the habit to give when you're struggling, when you become wealthy, you would not have learned how to. Giving is something that is important because it does two things to you. First, it helps you to understand that you're just a steward and that whatever you have was given to you by God. So when you give to things that you consider God's cause, it helps you to stay in tune with your source and your maker. Then give to your environment because there are two important laws. The first law is love the Lord your God with all your heart. The second law is like that. Love your neighbor as yourself. So you give to God and you give to your immediate environment so that you can be a blessing to your community. It's not just money that you should be generous with. Be generous with your time. Be generous with your love and happiness. Take good care of your customers and employees. Becoming rich and wealthy is impossible to do alone. So appreciate those who help you along the way. Remember, the more you give, the more you will receive. Plus, it always feels good to give back. Enjoy the journey. Love what you're doing. It's important. So that even as you're progressing, as you're moving from struggle to stability until you reach sustenance, you are doing it joyfully. You don't want to lose your life along the way. I cannot finish this. Maybe next time I will talk to you again about the Ten Commandments of Money. Remember, follow me. Same time next week. The Fumi Johnson. Family Today with Fumi Johnson is powered by The Capstone. Church Without Walls.